The flow in this WTF episode is available on the TDG Power Platform Bank. Filter to flow, and it is this flow here. Happy flowing! Hey everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to talk about how you can automatically update a business process flow stage in a model driven app using flow. This is an advanced level topic and I'm going to explain what a business process flow is. I'm going to talk about the scenario and the methods that I'm going to use today and then we're going to jump straight into the demo. A business process flow helps guide an end user in terms of how they need to interact with the record in their model driven app. Within each business process flow stage when you are configuring it, you can outline what the steps are, which are represented by fields, and you can also define whether that step is required before they can move on from one stage to another. When you create a custom business process flow, what's going to happen behind the scenes automatically is that an entity will be created that will be that business process flow entity record. And it will have the same name as your business process flow. And this entity is important because back in June 2017, it was announced that there would be some features that would be deprecated. And amongst those features was the old method of being able to update a business process flow. And these are fields that were previously updated within the actual record itself. So in my scenario, I'm using an application custom entity. If I were to look at the fields in the entity settings of my solution, I would see fields that are displaying as deprecated and the new method is to actually call the business process flow entity record and what you need to do is you need to update the active stage ID value with the stage ID of the stage that you want it to move to and you also need to update the traverse path. So when you look at the traverse path in advanced file this is what it's going to look like. You're going to see a bunch of IDs that are separated by commas and those IDs are the stage ID. So it's a representation of the life cycle of that BPF for the end user. The fields that we are referencing today in my flow are things like the active stage ID. We need to reference the application record. So this is how the BPF is associated to the application. It is through this lookup. And then we have the business process flow instance ID. So it is the ID of the record that contains this information. We also have the traverse path, which I just talked about. And then we have the usual status and status reason fields. These two fields are important because they are a representation of the state of a BPF. When you are at the very end of your BPF, you will have a stage and it will be um, finished. And so that's an indication that the BPF has been completed and it's now finished. And to have it reflect as finished, you need to make sure that you update those two fields to inactive and finished. So what I'm going to show you today is an extension of my grant application management solution. And I'm going to talk about um, the interactions of the end users, because based on their interactions, this is how we're going to update the BPS stages. So we have Dynamics 365 for portals, which is going to be the applicants and the external reviewers. And then we have the model driven app, which is the internal reviewer. And by using flow, through a combination of actions and expressions, we are going to successfully update a business process flow stage automatically. And if you have not heard or seen my previous blogs on the grant application management solution that I've built, I will provide some links in the YouTube description. So go ahead and check it out. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the demo now. So this is my model driven app for my grant application management solution. And as you can see, I've created a custom business process flow and it's now enabled. So for the purpose of this demo, I've got three stages. I have in progress and the status reason is draft. Then I have my review stage and the status reason will be submitted. And then I have my approved stage where the status reason will be approved. So what we want to do is when the status reason equals submitted, so this will update when the applicant 
has submitted the application through the portal, we want to move the business process flow stage automatically from in progress to review. In my flow, what I have here is I have a trigger and it is when my application status reason is updated and this is what my attribute filter is. My next action is utilizing the list records action. And in here, what we're doing is we're referencing that business process flow entity record. And to do that, we need to use a filter query where we only want to return the application BPF record that is associated to the application. And this field is represented by that lookup that I showed you earlier in the slides. So this is what this list records action is performing. It's only going to return the BPF record that is associated to the application. The next action that we're using in this flow is a parse JSON action. In here, I am using the first function. And if you want to know more about this, refer to my previous WTF episode because I explain why we use the first function. And in here, you can use the response of the list records action to generate the schema. So I'm just going to quickly switch over to a run history. So basically it is it is this um, output in here that you can copy and paste to generate the schema. The next two actions that we have is compose. Now I'm using a compose action so that I can store the stage IDs of the review stage and the approved stage. How to identify what these stages are. This is where you can refer to the docs.microsoft.com article because it talks about how you can retrieve that information and it provides a get method down here. And basically what you can do is you can replace the organization URI with your instance and at the very end, you need to insert the business process flow instance ID in here. You want to grab um, the ID of your business process flow record. And the simplest way to do that is simply navigate to your business process flow record. And it is this ID up here. And once you go ahead and paste that all into a browser, this is what it looks like. And then if you dump it into something like Notepad++, and view it in JSON format, then you can easily identify what your stage IDs are. Now, I'm using two compose actions because I don't actually know how to store this in a flow action uh, in terms of a HTTP request. I did try the HTTP action, but it didn't work so successfully. It kept throwing errors. So my workaround was to store the IDs as two compose actions. If you have a better way of how to do this, um, how about you blog about it or maybe you vlog about it and then uh, do a shout out to me on Twitter and I can go ahead and check it out so I know what to do next time. Okay, so we're going back to my flow. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a switch action, which I'll talk about now. If you don't know what a switch action is, I recommend checking out another MVP in our community whose name is Peter. So he has a blog called Microsoft Share Pains. It is an awesome play on words. And he's done two blog posts on switches. And this is the technique that I'm going to be using in my WTF flow today. So basically what a switch is, it's pretty much telling you that you can perform a switch based on a value. And so I'm using the initialize variable action and what I'm saying in this action is that I am referencing the application status reason. It's a type of integer and we're using the status reason value from my trigger. And so we're basically saying that we want to perform a switch based on this variable. Now, a switch is useful when you've got more than one outcome that will happen. You can use a condition builder. There's nothing wrong in that. But when you've got, when you're expecting multiple outcomes, your condition builder might blow up because you're going to have different yes/no branches. 
but by using a switch it keeps it tidy and it's also just as effective. So I have my first switch case which is moving it to the review stage. So what we're saying in here is that when the application status reason equals submitted, we want to go and update the BPF record. And this action in here is my CDS update a record action. So I'm going to expand this now and talk to you about it. So because we're updating the BPF record, the entity that we're calling is that business process flow entity record. And so that is the application BPF entity. So as I mentioned, it will have the exact same name as your BPF. And the record identifier that we're using is a business process flow instance ID. So this will help us um, understand that this is the record that we want to update. And it's basically the record that we've called up here, but we've just parsed it. And that's because we don't want the applied each to appear. So then when you expand the advanced options, there's three other fields that we're updating in here. The first one is the traverse path. So as mentioned in the docs.microsoft.com article, you have to update the traverse path as well. So let me just switch over to this now. And by updating the traverse path, it captures the different, um, it's kind of like a history, it preserves the different stages that the business process flow has um, gone through. And so this traverse path is pretty much going to be the values of the stage ID. So when we were calling the BPF record up here, at this point in time, it was in the in progress stage. So to update the traverse value to um, reflect the active stage ID of review, what we're going to do is we're going to use the concat function in my expression and we're going to call the traverse path value that was up here, which is um, this part of the expression. And then we need to separate it by a comma, which is what we're doing. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to actually grab the compose action that is storing the review process stage ID. So then when we have a look at this, it's going to have two stage ID values. One will be in progress and one will be reviewed. So the next thing in the docs.microsoft.com article is that it talks about updating the active stage field as well. And it needs to be the ID of that stage you want the end user to see when they next open up the application. So in here, this is where I'm referencing my compose action of review process stage ID, which is this action up here. And then I'm also referencing my application ID and that's based on the trigger. So we do the exact same steps for the case that will move, um, sorry, for the case of the switch that will update the BPF record as well to um, the finished state of the BPF. And this time what we're saying is that we want the value to equal to approved. So this is the status reason. And then when we want to update that BPF record, it's exactly the same steps except for a couple of things. So the, the one thing that is different to the update BPF record in here is that I'm now explicitly saying that I want it to be displayed to finished and I need the state of the BPF to be inactive because it's a representation that the that there's nothing else that needs to happen for that application. The BPF has essentially been completed. And then in my traverse path, um, the only difference here is that I'm referencing my compose action that is storing the approved stage ID. And yeah, that's, that's about it in terms of the WTF flow. So by using a switch, it will effectively ensure that based on the status reason, whether it's whether it is submitted or approved, it will go and update the BPF stage accordingly. All right, so let's hit save and let's go ahead and trigger the flow so I can show you end to end how it works. 
So I'm going to now browse to my portal and let me just refresh this web page. So here's one that I submitted, oh, that I created earlier. So here's an application that is in draft where we can hit submit application. Now before I do that, this is what the application looks like. Currently it's in progress and we'll see that the status reason is draft. Once I um, click on the submit application, I have another um, flow that's happening behind the scenes that will update this status reason from draft to submitted. So let's hit refresh and eventually we'll see that application update to submitted. So there it is there. So let's see if our flow has successfully ran. So it ran five seconds ago and it's gone through all of my actions. So let's check which switch case it went through and it went to the move to review stage and we should see that the update BPF record details has all successfully gone through. Okay, moment of truth. When I go back to my model driven app and I refresh my browser, we should now see that in progress is now moved to review. Cool, that worked. Okay, so then the last scenario that we're gonna go through is approving the application so that it can move from review to approve. So I'm gonna log in to the portal as the external reviewer. So again, you would have seen this in my previous vlogs where I covered my grant application management solution in detail. So I'm logged in as a reviewer and let's say, you know, I'm all fine with it. Um, and so the external reviewer needs to click approve. So then what's gonna happen behind the scenes is that back in my model driven app, we're gonna see that that application has been approved by the external reviewer, so it's this one. And then the very last step is for the internal reviewer to approve the application. So again, as you would have seen in my previous blog that went through the grant application management solution, when you have two approvals, one from the internal reviewer and the external reviewer, it will go and automatically update the status reason to approved. When it does that, it should then trigger my WTF flow that will automatically update the business process flow stage from review to approve. So that's what we're gonna do now. Great, so my status reason has been updated to approved and you'll now see that in my business process flow, it's now updated to finished. And so if we go back to my flow run history and we have a look at the flow that went through the different switch case of updating business process flow all the way to the approve stage, we'll see that it has successfully run and yeah, that is my WTF episode today. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave me a thumbs up or a comment below if you liked this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time because it's time to switch out. See what I did there? <laughs> okay, bye. Turn up. Let's go. Let's go.